Hey, this is Steve Bloom, and you are listening to the GeekCast Radio Network. This is The Brain, and you're listening to the GeekCast Radio Network. Yes! You're listening to the GeekCast Radio Network of podcasts. Hi, this is Bob Odiansky for GeekCast Radio Network. Thank you for listening. Hi, I'm Brian Ward, DVD producer from Shout Factory, and you're listening to the GeekCast Radio Network. This is Brian T. Stevenson, and you're listening to the GeekCast Radio Network. Hi, this is Christy Marks, the writer of Gem and the Holograms and Beast Wars, and you're listening to GeekCast Radio Network. This is Daniel Southworth, and you're listening to the GeekCast Radio Network. Hi, this is Dan Gilbazan, and you're listening to the GeekCast Radio Network. This is Jason Marsden, the voice of Duke from G.I. Joe Renegades. You're listening to the GeekCast Radio Network. Yo, Joe. Hi, this is Gary Chalk, and you're listening to the GeekCast Radio Network. You're listening to GeekCast Radio on GeekCastRadio.com. Listening to Geekcast Radio on the Geekcast Radio Network. You're listening to the five year celebration of the Geekcast Radio Network. Hello and welcome to GeekCast Radio, episode 65, a.k.a. the five-year anniversary episode. I'm your host, Steve Megatron Phillips, and joining me as it should be... DFT and Mike. Yo. Yo. Yes, it's hard to believe it's been five freaking years. Yep. Doesn't seem like that long, actually. Te- technically, for the two of us, it's been close to six and seven years. Six for me, seven for you, but since the actual network was inceptionalized, it's been five years. Inception. It's like a mind fuck. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've been pe- fucking people's minds for the past five years. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, yeah, so... Uh, I guess, where do we want to go from here to kind of, should we kind of do like a, a rough guide rough into the, yeah. Yeah. the vision of GeekCast Radio? Yeah. We should go over the history again because um, I don't know if, it, I know you and I have both talked at length of how we both came up with this thing. But I don't know how many people remember half of those episodes that we've talked about our origin and, you know, becoming friends and doing all this and all that and everything else. And so it's probably best if this is the five year anniversary show that we kind of rehash all that. Um, for me, it was 2007, it was like April of 2007, I found World's Finest Podcast from Earth2.net. Uh, listened to them. I soon found, um, I think around 2008 is when I joined Twitter. Um, I think that's when I joined Twitter. I don't remember. Uh, it's been a long ass time. Uh, and at that time I had been listening to this week in geek.net for a while. Uh, it was friends with Mike Dodd on Twitter and then you were also friends with him. And we were both friends with Jesse, Matrix Prime, who does TF, who used to do TF Wire. Uh, And, you know, you sent me a message and back and forth and yada, yada, yada. Five years later, here we are. (laughs) Always love pulling a George Costanza out of the hat. Um, uh, So, but basically, you know, I at the time in 2007, 2008 was working for a company where um, it was a nonprofit childcare facility where my job was to be a live-in resident. 
So technically, I was on call 24 hours a day, obviously minus, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight hours for sleeping. But um, so they paid me plus they gave me free rent for about five years. I was at that job for five. It's the longest job I've ever had, five years. Um, during that time, I had found podcasting and I figured, oh, hey, because I, I remember when I first found World's Finest Podcast, I was like, oh my god, it's Bruce Tim and his team talking about these shows, and then I was like, oh wait, who are these guys? These guys are just average Joes like me. And I was like, hmm, anybody can do a podcast, and then you and I had, like I said, you know, met up in, I think it was on Twitter, maybe September, sometime the summer of 2008, because by December, we were, um, we were doing ATTF and, and TFG1 together, uh, for the most part. Um, I found out very quickly, I am not a solo pod. There, there are very few people that I know that can pull off a one-man podcast. I am not one of them. At all. <laughs> I was very, very mad at the G1 cartoon series when I, <laughs> when I did the original TFG1 podcast. Um... Back then, I mean, it, it's a huge reversal, honestly. Back then, all as I did was record, ladies and gentlemen. I did no back-end stuff. And now, I'm not saying I do it all, but I do a majority of it. Um, what about you? What you know? What what made you want to get into podcasting? I mean, I you know, I know you said you've said in the past that you were, you know, on on the TF Wire stuff. But what what prompted you to even start that? Well, the more I, I think about it, the more I, I kind of reimagine uh, a lot of things happening. Uh, I've actually been doing this since I was a kid, if that <laughs> makes any sense. Because I used to record things into a tape recorder. Mm -hmm. I, for the life of me, do not know where any of those tapes are. <laughs> um, because I've actually thought about going back to them and figuring out what the hell I actually did. But I used to record myself um, reading or or just talking about random crap um, mm. on video camera and on cassette. And it was kind of one of those um, seeds of the future, lie buried in the past kind of moments. Mm -hmm. Um because I didn't realize that that would come to pass later in the future because I actually had no interest in doing podcasts. I listened to them. Um, yeah. But I was more so interested in doing uh, voiceover, which, granted, I still am. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, one thing left to another, and I, I was listening to TF Wire, and they were putting out a casting call um, for auditions for um, War Stories. Right. And I basically got it because I could do the narrative and do the voices. Mm -hmm. So uh, one thing that kind of killed that show a little bit soon is one, people quit sending in fanfics, and the other was <laughs> I was kind of slow at turnaround time. Yeah. Um, it just, that's how it was. I read, would rather play video games than and build websites than work on recording at the time. <laughs> no, I'd rather do the opposite. <laughs> um, but yeah so I mean I did that and then I kind of joined uh, their team doing that I, I did an episode um, for the first Transformers movie um, mm -hmm. the week after it came out uh, it was like episode 84 or something like that um, with Spada and, and uh, Ryan. Uh, Jesse and oh. there was somebody else um, it was before Ryan joined um. Um, so we did that and then I ended up guesting on Play On for an episode for Super Smash Brothers Brawl, I believe. Yeah, because it was on the Wii. Wow, that's been out a long time. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it, then shortly thereafter, the network started, started taking a nosedive. They canceled um, pretty much everything. Uh, and then mm -hmm. it was just TF Wire and then uh, E-Rift and, and whatever. But um, I was left with a whole and at the time they they wanted to expand into other podcasts and i suggested um two other podcasts which were basically the same but yet different one of them being 
movie we could review. Mm-hmm. Which, hearty har har, it lives on. Um, so you can <laughs> we'll technically say that that's the first GeekCast Radio Network show that was thought out. Thought of, yeah, thought out. Thought out. Um, um, yeah, yeah, which, well. the original incarnation was what Kevin's doing at this point. I just, mm-hmm. when we started doing it, it was a completely different beast because of time matters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it basically yeah. was the concept of my other show that I was going to do, which was Weekend at the Movies. <laughs> right. So, yeah. But anyways, um, fast forward a couple months, and I created All Things Transformers, which <laughs> was a train wreck until you joined it. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not... I, I, I'm not I, 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 it's... <laughs> yeah, it was terrible. I, I, that's where I discovered I cannot do solo podcasts. Um, because I was like, yes, and last week, Bernie Mac died. And on other things, Bumblebee is not this, you know, and I was just like, wow, this is just, it sounds horrid. Um, and it sounded so, like, careless, like, oh, Bernie Mac died. Boom. <laughs> not not sadly passed away this past weekend, you know. It, it, no, it was, he just died, and then I just moved on. Um, so that that was showing how green I was at the time, but... Um, and then, yeah, uh, I joined Twitter and I started following This Week in Geek and listening to their live podcasts broadcast oh, through CRNC. Um, oh, absolutely. Uh, streaming it through iTunes. And I did the whole um, Twitter thing. And uh, we, um, I started following other podcasters and Transformers fans, which is probably how I got a hold of you. Yeah, because you're much. like, who the hell is this guy? And you were always I was... texted on there, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'll add him, I'll add him, I'll add him. Yeah, I in, in the beginning I was so fearful of like, the spam guy. bots. It's a scary well, guy. Stop no, me. no, no. I was more so fearful of the spam bots at the time and and everything else. And um, for me, like I was saying, because of the day job that I had. I mean, essentially it's a night job, but, you know, I, because of the job that I had and all the free time that I had and because of my um, disabilities that I was born with, through mild case cerebral palsy and I have optic atrophy and astigmatism in my eyes, getting a real job wasn't re- Like, I've had real jobs before. I think the longest <laughs> job I had was four months at a Kroger video store when Kroger still used, you know, a video section in their, in their grocery stores. Um, after that, the longest job I had was at this, this child care, this nonprofit child care facility. Um, but I had so much time on my hands and I was already listening. I was listening basically in 2007, 2008, I was listening to podcasts and playing online games is what I was doing back then. And I just, I've, always been you know like you said you you know when, when you were young you used to you know re- record your voice on on a tape recorder i used to do that too because i have always ever since i was a little kid been obsessed with radio stations specifically the morning show people depending on where i was living but every time i would move to a different state i would find a you know whatever like whether it's you know hard rock or classic rock or Soft Rock or Hot 100 or Top 40 or whatever radio show, I would find one morning show that I absolutely love and I would basically be the call-in guy and I would call them every morning and you know whatever else and and so I've, I've always been fascinated I used to want to work in radio now I get it people radio doesn't pay at all but it wasn't about that it was more so it wasn't about that I thought that DJs made a bunch of money. It was more so the prestige. I mean, you know, you look at some DJs. You know, you look at people like, okay, the the lesser of two evils that I can reference is Carson Daly. I mean, that dude's been on the radio for years now. And, you know, you look at someone like him who, okay, sure, he's saved up over his career, but I'm sure he was get, wasn't getting peanuts. But it was more for the prestige of being a radio host that I wanted to be that. And uh, I figured, okay, you know, Transformers, Generation 1, I love that show when I was a kid. I can go back and I can, you know, relive that and rewatch it. And at the time, I had the original Rhino DVDs. Um, and uh, it, 
was kind of rough in the beginning because I thought, like right now, I'm I'm like slumped back in my chair. My microphone's about I don't know three or four feet away from where I'm sitting, and I'm more relaxed now. Six years ago, I was sitting up straight in my chair, leaning full into the microphone, making sure every single word came through. And I was basically, you remember the um, the the news announcer guy in Good Morning Vietnam? Today in the Viet Cong, you know, the guy that, you know, somebody's car is part, just that really, really stiff radio guy. That's what I thought I had to be in 2008. And ever since, I think, probably TuneCast episode 51 or somewhere around there, I just said, screw it. I just <laughs> became this laid back, you know, uh, you know, uh, but um, with GCRN, it's it's been an incredible ride. If you would have told me seven years ago that I would have been able to talk to the likes of Rob Paulson, Tara Strong, Lauren Lester, Kevin, that I would be, that we would be able to talk to Batman, I would have just stared at you like you were crazy. I would have I, I would have gone down to the corner medical store, bought a straight jacket, and said, "Here, get in this because you're nuts." But in the last five years, we've had just north of sixty interviews in total um and it's been it's it's been amazing Uh, you know um after tfg1 was done i i wanted to do something else and you and i talked about mwire and at the time i had a huge film collection um i had one whole movie shelf just for films the other two shelves were uh, animation and TV shows, um, and I'm like, okay, I can do this, and I still work from. I've modified it heavily, but I still work from. I sat down, and this is the thing with me, ladies and gentlemen. I am one of those people that I have to sit down, write out a schedule, whether it's whether we stick to it or not. I need to have a plan written down on paper for at least a year, two years in advance of whatever I'm doing. So I can see the big picture of where it's going. I still have the original document, even though, as I said, it's heavily edited, because MWire, what is now MWire in depth, is uh, up to 106 episodes at this point. Um, it's heavily edited, but I still use it. I'm still using it at, right now at this point. Uh, with the TFG One podcast, Pecan Court Michael uh, jumped on. Because he was a listener who kind of criticized me a lot, which I deserve. I'm not saying I don't deserve it at all in the beginning, because I, you know, I was very green in the beginning. Um, but uh, you know, I said, okay, hey, well, you like Transformers, I like Transformers. Do you want to come on the show and you know be the be the new co-host? Because you weren't exactly G1 wasn't your thing. You, you, because you're, you know, you're the youngest of most of us. Yeah, um, I'm the, the Beast Wars fan. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're the, you're the Beast Wars fan, and uh, uh, I, I remember the first. I think it was either ATTF episode eight or if it was some other special thing before TFG one really got off the ground. You asked me, so what's what's next? What's after that? Are you going to do a Beast Wars show? I said, I don't, I don't know, probably. Um, but Pecan Court Michael joined up. We had a blast. I love recording with Michael is like sitting at a comedy club watching Robin Williams do his thing, like quite literally. I mean, uh, the dude can go on and on and on. And I mean, I could sit here and record with him for seven hours and it not matter that it's a seven hour podcast. It really wouldn't. Uh, so there's that. And by the time that was done, uh, Kevin Optimus Solo, I found him through TFW of all places, I think, um, or he found me, uh, and we crafted Tooncast Classic, uh, you know, 100 episodes, cartoons from, you know, 1920s, 30s, all the way to 99, um, and that kind of, you know, took off, got a huge following. We got a lot of criticism for that, but we also got a lot of praise for it. That's one thing I'll, I'll, I'll say. Over the years, I, I've gotten better with some of the more critical reviews. Um, 
but I am so anal retentive. I still, to this day, check iTunes on a daily basis for any new reviews for any of our shows. Um, because I want to see if people are listening and, and responding and whatever else. And, uh, you know, it, it's so many shows that we've done over the years between ATTF and its constant evolution. I mean, that show has evolved so many times that that I have no idea. I, I honestly do not remember episode 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 from the original 1.0 days. I really don't. Um, you know, TFG1 got completed. We started the Beast Unleashed podcast, which to this day is still the world's first and only Beast Wars and Beast Machine episode-by-episode episode podcast. People uh, that have Transformers podcasts might dedicate an episode or two to the franchises, but I don't think I've found any podcast online since we started that show that has done what we've done with that. I don't think um, so either. We went to animated after that. Uh, a number, you know, Kevin has his his telecast, um, his telecast show. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with telecast. Uh, I know Kevin has expressed to me that he wants to record, ladies and gentlemen. He really, really does. He just he has a lot of life crap with jobs he, that keep coming up. He, so I mean, it's, yeah, you know. I mean, he, he he's working his ass off, and we very much appreciate it. Um, was it year three or year four when we started the tournaments? And well, we started um, well, the top one hundred animated series stuff. But go ahead. Well, I was going to say twenty eleven. I believe it was. Yes, same year. Right. Uh, I, I believe that's the first year we did the top one hundred. Yep, you're right. And it was. It was great, it was fun, but it was also a train wreck. <laughs> but in doing so, we learned what not to do and what to do. So, it... I think that that's been one of our uh, one of our, our callings. Mm -hmm. Has been the top 100. Just because it, we, we kind of started out with our mission was to do podcasting to begin with. Right. And then create a network and then grow it out. And then right. it seems like it started going towards, okay, we're going to try and do an IGN but not be douchey about it. Yeah. Um, and we caught wind of their top 100, which for one, I I'm sorry, but if you have to click page by page 100 yeah. times, oh, well, I'm sorry, 102 times because there's an intro and an outro. Mm -hmm. It's in just so they can get ads. It's ridiculous. I, I'm the, I've never been. It, would I like to make income off the site? Hell yeah, I would. But I'm not going to do it at the expense of pissing people off because it's something that would piss me off as well. Absolutely. Like I, it, it just it, it's one of those things. I just I can't get behind trying to whore it out, more or less. Absolutely um, not. Yeah. So that's why we did it in five page increments so that it wasn't um, too long on the browser, but it was still, you got like 20 show or mm -hmm. 20 um, selections per, or actually I think we may have even broke it down by um, how we did it in the podcast, which I think was twenties. Yeah, it was twenties. Um, so, I mean, uh, you have seven total posts or podcasts about it, but we actually explained it. We, we got some, some collaborators. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The first top 100, we had over 20 collaborators. <laughs> Um, but there was a lot all, of in individuals. Right. There were a lot of individuals. But, you know, we, 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 we went to websites, we went to other podcasters, and we, you know, we, you know, we asked them for their help. And they helped us craft the list that we have. And then last year, we did the top 100 animated films, um, which I believe it was over 30 or 40 collaborators this I time. So I'd say that's fairly accurate. I think that's what it was, um, because Movie Revolt Dan, who came in, um, when did when did Dan come in? I think in? he came in in 2012. Yeah, so he came in the fourth, no, the third year. Um, he came in probably late 2012 or, or, or mid 2012, and then uh, yeah. was able to help usher in the the new top 100 towards the end of year four. 
Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, he, he got all, he went out, him and Kevin did an amazing job getting all the collaborators and everybody to, together for the top 100 animated films. And we will be doing another top 100 in the future. We don't know exactly when yet. I, I have my own kind of timeline and plan in place, but yes. I have to, uh, we're getting this stuff done first. And oh, absolutely. I would like to get some more GCR on Wars in the tournament in before oh. we do another top 100, which I will say that some of the elements of things going on with the tournament, mm-hmm. not the individual episodes of Wars, but the tournament will have some kind of play action into the top 100. Yeah. Exactly. I'm not going to give specifics, and you could oh. you could incur the 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 medium that it's in, but you could also incur that it could be specific items within those mediums. So it's it's I'm going to leave it vague because it's fun. To do yes, that. just just I've been shut comp- up already because you're going to give it away. I know. Well, I've been compiling my <laughs> list since mid, mid last year, little by little. I actually have to finish it, but yeah, yes. Um, we've had additions like, uh, well, the, f- I, oh, I, go ahead. we gotta, we gotta get into the tournaments though. Okay. Real quick. What was your, your thought on, on doing that? Which was, I, I mean, granted wars, I intended it to be something completely different when it started. It was, yeah, it was wanted, an attempt. You, yeah. But it was a failed attempt. Well, you wanted it to be a debate podcast where we would debate stuff like that very first. Um, yeah, we did the healthcare and the shitty government, <laughs> which, which, which was interesting, need, but which we probably need to do again, <laughs> honestly. But hey, um, we called it way before it ever started. So <laughs> thank God he only has eight hundred and something more days left. Um, but um, but no, on. the tournament. Yeah, yes, the um, the tournament was. I I thought it was really good. Um, I thought it was interesting <coughs> how we went about it. Our first tournament was for wars was eighties cartoon villains, and we had in round one. I'm just looking here at the post. If the image will pop up, come on now. Um, we had what six? No, it couldn't have been sixteen. It was more than that. No, it was it was sixteen. Was it? Yeah, 16 entrants. I'll, I sent you the image. But anyways, um, you know, you had Skeletor against Hardak and and uh, um, Cobra Commander and Psykill, and you had... Um, um, ah, there it is. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Megatron versus Leader One, Shredder against Tex Hex, and yeah. some of them were off-kilter balance. I, I get why some of them were battling certain people, and then at the same time, it was weird, the ones that won... <laughs> Mm-hmm. In certain categories, because yeah. Um, it, anyways, but it was it was between our votes and fan votes, which was mm-hmm. really fun. Um, some of them were so lopsided from the get go that I had oh, the I art know. done before the next episode, <laughs> and I had it ready already in the post, kind of waiting. And I was in the next voting setup because it was so lopsided; there was no way anything was going to happen with it. Yeah, um, I, I will say that uh, a, as it progressed, because I'm not going to give away the ending because there may be people that haven't listened yet, and it's yeah, it's no, go go listen to the wars tournament, people. Um, um, but it, it was it was interesting to see how it played out. There was there was some backlash, but it wasn't just us deciding. So yeah, <laughs> it's all your fault too. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, but it was fun. It was it was entertaining, and, and we have a, a bigger, grander uh, 32 bracket for the uh, next run. Wow! It's not it's not 80s villains, I, I, and it's not 80 or not 80s heroes or 90s heroes or 90s villains. It's something completely different. Um, it's it's something that will just push your buttons, people. All right, we can't say anything more because we're going to give it away. Um, if I didn't already with that. Yes. Um, uh, 
What I was going to say a second ago before you talked before we talked about the tournaments was um, the additions in the core podcast because we added we had uh, your buddies over at the lunch room the lunch table come in and take over XRG it became off the cuff and they had been going you know they're they're going strong talking about video games um, I brought in TV's Mr Neil and he and I are doing Pixels in the animation which is us reviewing nine. Different every episode of nine different video game based cartoons. Um, uh, let's see, you started Altered Geek, which was a, a, a genesis of your video series you initially wanted to do, yep. which turned that into a podcast. Um, a movie Week in Review has has gone weekly with. Um, originally, it was Michael Powers. Kevin, uh, Kevin Optimus Solo and Movie Revolt Dan. Now it's Kevin and his two friends, uh, Matt and Nate, that they basically go through the new, the movie news and everything else. They have a, a, a featured uh, attraction or a feature presentation type of thing, and then they talk about you know that they have a credits conversation and whatever else. Uh, because of well, it's all your fault. And the Jokers, yeah. because of GCR's, um, was it? It was it was the comic five, spotlight. Yeah, it was a five episode comic spotlight on Death of the Family. Um, I went ahead and created the pull bag, which is myself and a bunch of um, random. Hosts. My fr- well, I didn't want to say that. I didn't want to say random. Well, it's not random. I mean, I, there's set set important people yeah. in, in different. Um, Oh, they absolutely. have different and, fandom yes. interests. And, and that's the greatest thing about the pull bag is, while I can read almost anything for the most part, um, I find people that come on and talk about the same interest that I do. So I'll have someone, like I have Joe Reed talking about the current IDW ongoing for the Turtles, and I have JT from Saskatoon talking about the new animated adventures that's based on the Nickelodeon cartoon. Uh, you and I do a lot of the bat stuff, uh, which is slowly changing and progressing throughout. Um, I've got Ender and Lady Wreck for the Transformers stuff. Uh, you know, so there, 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 there's all this stuff there. Uh, Tooncast Beyond uh, was the natural evolution of Tooncast Classic. That will be coming back this year for two seasons, summer and winter. So you'll have to see what we we come up with sometime this summer and then later this uh, Christmas. Actually, we're going to be doing... uh, I'll I'll, I'll actually go ahead and tell everybody. Starting this year, in 2014, which is technically the five-year anniversary also of Tooncast Classic, Tooncast Beyond is starting 25 Days of Christmas. Um, you'll, you'll have to wait around, ladies and gentlemen, until about, I don't know, the second or third week in November, either right before or right after Thanksgiving, I will be posting a blog post about what is going to be entailed in the 25 days of Tooncast Beyond Christmas. Um, but that's going to be interesting and awesome. Uh, let's see, what are other shows? Uh, Geekcast Radio, the flagship show, um... It's had its ups and downs over the five years. Originally, I wanted it to be something where we could spend two or three hours talking about one topic and have it be kind of a big kind of thing. And um, since then, it's it's kind of grown and, and, and expanded. I did my huge music spotlight a couple of years ago. Um, we've had various topics, like we celebrated 73 years of Batman two years ago. Uh, we so we celebrated turtles two years ago. Uh, we, we have a lot of really great uh, content over there, and that is where you can find the top 100 animated series and top 100 animated films uh, releases uh, for the countdowns for the top 100 stuff coming up on GCR. Um, where? Well, in episode 66, we're going to do a Star Wars retrospective. Uh, with the new movie, you know, on the horizon of the planet with two suns, we're going to do a very small Star Wars retrospective, and then episodes sixty-seven through seventy-two, we're going to do something we've never done before. I, Steve, and I are going to basically interview 
all of our syndicated and partner program staff and their shows. So um, basically what's going to happen is uh, we have – God, I'm not looking at it, Steve. How many partner – Eight. I've sold up we the have... grid. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We have eight different partners. We have What's on Joe Mind, Star Joe's, Punisher Body Count, Mark Who, 42's Hooniverse, Hanuk Outcast Podcast. Future Imperfect really kind of, it counts, but it doesn't count because I it want is to yours. interview myself. Ask myself <laughs> questions. <laughs> I want to ask yourself a few questions. Yeah, no, that, no. Oh, no. Um, uh, Geek Scholars Movie News and Turtle Flakes. Um, so each episode, from episode 67 to 72 of GeekCast Radio, Steve and I are going to sit down with at least two of each of these podcasts' uh, uh, creators and talk to them about their interest and why they wanted to start podcasting and basically interview them and you're going to get an in-depth look at each one of our partners and why you should be checking out their shows along with our shows. Yep. Uh, you know, Dan, um, you know, movie rule Dan, he's been doing amazing stuff with his written film reviews. Um, don't always agree with his Ebert-inspired opinions, but... Um, uh, we had a blast doing the James Bond spotlight on Movie Week in Review, as well as the Superman spotlight. Um, so that's very, very awesome. We allowed him to start his own show, Talking in Circles, where it's him and a couple of his friends. Talking in Circles? Pretty much. Um, yeah, and that's, that's pretty much the network. We have... We might give you guys a couple of sneak peeks. I might mention stuff a little bit later after we go through some of the feedback and after we do a little bit of the contest reveal, I might share some stuff that's coming up. But um, we've, we've been able to do so much, and I, I am so proud of where we are right now after five years. I mean, we're still relevant. People still pay attention to us. That's so nice because, I mean, a lot of podcasting networks don't last this long. They really don't. No, most of them fade away. So, um, I think, do we want to do the feedback? Uh, yeah, we can, we can do that in a second. Um, okay. One of the, one of the nice things about the, the network has been mm -hmm. uh, not only getting to be heard, because I, I find it difficult because on some of these bigger sites, and I'm not saying that you know, if it happens here, you know, it, it'll be a good thing and a bad thing. But mm -hmm. um, being that, like, I, I never, I, I will never become like IGN. I don't care. <laughs> I'm not trying to make it like a, a bash fest. I honestly yeah, am not. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying that they're not personal with with their friends and fans and everybody. It's It's kind of... Um, it's a business for them. It's a business, and and with us, it's it's a little bit different. We like the interaction. We like the, you know, battling opinions back and forth, even if it's just in the comments section. Because, um, let's face it, sometimes you guys listening to us, you get to know how to push our buttons. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, but I, I also like you know seeing the interaction because honestly, some of these shows without the interaction there's almost no point to do them. Yeah. So I'm not saying I wouldn't still do them, but it's, you know, it's, it, it, it it's more enticing to, to want to do them and come up mm -hmm. with interesting things and kind of bring it up and not sit there and just, and today the news is blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, saying, well, I hate it because it's crap. And then just move on. You know, we, we try and come up with, you know, interesting reasons for the most part. Yeah, I am so not a news show podcaster. I, I can comment on the news when I have to, but reporting the news on a podcast, that is so not me anymore. I did that for This Week in Geek for the longest time on their Nerd News Network, and in the end it just made me want to puke, honestly. Because <laughs> I was... No, I'm, I, I gotta I, be honest. I know. I, I just... 
to those of you who are longtime fans, you, you might want to fast forward for five and a half seconds because you know what I'm going to say. Filming locations are not bleeping news stories. I don't care that Michael Bay is making the Willis Tower explode. I don't care if the next James Bond film is filming in San Francisco again. Uh, it's just that's just one of those things that just really, really got under my skin a lot of the times uh, when reporting news items. Um, and that's why I... Like I said, I can discuss a little bit of the news when we, you know, when, when, when you and Michael have, when you and Powers have me on Altered Geek, but doing a regular weekly news podcast, uh, I got so burnt out of it. And where I excel, ladies and gentlemen, honestly, is the review shows. That's, well, between... that's kind of what you're known for. Yeah. I'm kind of, <laughs> I, I'll be honest, I, I like the review shows. Uh-huh. But there comes a point in them that I just start getting bored, and you can <laughs> and, and you can always tell when that point comes because I become less and less interested yep. um, as as they go, and I try not to. Usually, that's a good sign that it's either a close to being done, or b um, it's almost done anyway. I think by the time Beast Unleashed ended, all three of us wanted to rip each other's throats. I out think we wanted John style. I, I think we all wanted to go our separate ways at that point, but I think it's yeah because. <laughs> Well, the series got so dark. No, oh, see, I still like the series well, at the end. I, I'm saying, like, oh, the po- the podcast, the podcast, yeah, the podcast got, got dark. So... <laughs> we we all started was... coming up with like really, really kind of raunchy jokes, and which don't yeah. get me wrong, they were hilarious when they came up, but yeah, it uh, some of them we started, you know, resorting to evil name calling and. And wanting to bludgeon each other, and so yes, um, yes it um, yes. it it was, it was fun. But I was glad that it was over when it was. Otherwise, if it had gone on another ten, fifteen episodes, I'm pretty sure we would have all disbanded. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But no, I mean, I enjoy the shows, and and I lately I've been trying to scale back and go because one, I'm lacking time, and two, it's. Yeah, you, you you've gotten a lot has happened to you in the last five years. You and you and your wife have a, have a house. Well, we got yeah. married. We had a kid. We got a house. <laughs> yep. Um, all the adult stuff you're supposed to do. Yes. Um, I've recently had a position change at my job, so it's mm-hmm. I have to work different hours that I'm not particularly thrilled about. Um, mm-hmm. Pays a little better, so I'm a little bit happy about that, and I'm not doing the the part of the shit job that I was doing before. I still get to keep the, the decent parts. So that's that's a plus. But I, I just, yeah, I've had a lot go on, especially recent. So I've been trying to play catch up on um, all the stuff we got going on here because I miss it. The, I missed having internet. I missed being able to actually interact and, and communicate <laughs> and, and not be on my phone where it's heating up against my ear. Yeah, you, yeah. I still got you beat when it comes to frustration with not having internet, seriously. Ladies I went gentlemen. without you, it for you, a month. And, and, yeah. And you're you, sitting you here. Went, <laughs> I went you, 20 minutes without it. It's like, yeah, see, I just... And and that's that's part of my my personality. I need something to do all the time. I will go between working on my computer, doing stuff for the network, or maybe playing a game or two on Facebook, or maybe playing thirty forty minutes of Grand Theft Auto Four. And then you know an hour later, I'll go in and I'll watch TV, and I'll end up falling asleep for the afternoon or something, or I'll have to take the dog out, or I'll have to do something for my mom, which is fine. I'm not complaining about it. But me without internet, five minutes is too long, let alone a whole month. So you ever see the 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 video of like the Star Wars kids sitting there beating on stuff? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's you without internet. Oh, I know it. Oh, I come completely... swinging all over the place, going ah, 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 ah. Oh, oh, having like def- or or like def- uh, characters on Family Guy where they just start randomly spasming on the floor. Mm. Oh no, not Family Guy. I'm thinking uh, Eight Crazy Nights where you got the um, uh, 
The old guy, yeah. Yeah, the the old guy where he just lays on the floor and starts having a spasm card and falling over and yeah, yeah. that's that's you without internet. Yeah, pretty much. Um, um. <laughs> but um so yeah, I mean we have obviously a lot of interests in different fandoms. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously some of them we can't cover because there's too little time. <laughs> to be able to yeah. cover what we want so um that of course is why uh we were look you know wanting to branch out and try and help other podcasters um like the ones that we mentioned earlier um as well mm-hmm. as um our network you know just by you know helping each other kind of get ex- exposure and um plus it gives us something to listen to that you know uh, like i i i like you know gi joe and stuff um, I've been kind of curious about the Doctor Who thing, so um, I'm not going to say I'm a fan of it, but I, I don't mm-hmm. have a problem with it after listening to Mark Who 42 kind of talk about it. I still right. don't know if I'll actually watch the show. <laughs> See, I tried. I, I, okay, I didn't go back to the original series. I started with the 2005 series. I watched. I tried watching one episode for each Doctor, and I just couldn't it's just not my thing i i, I just could I, I just couldn't I, I don't dislike it i have no animosity towards the series i have no animosity toward anyone who likes doctor who that's fine you can like what you like um but it, it's just not my cup of tea i will say in preparation for mark who 42's uh syndication spotlight episode here in GCR, I will be go- trying again to go back and watch several episodes of Doctor As Who. As will I. Um, if people want to suggest to us episodes of Doctor Who, uh, specifically the 2000, the, the, the current series, the current run. Um, or one of the current s- runs with, you know, maybe a specific um, plot line. Right. Let, you know, comment on this episode and let us know or shoot us an email, feedback at geekcastradio.com with the subject line, uh, who, uh, Doctor Who episodes. Um, where, where was I going with this? Um, the website, geekcastradio.com, has had a numerous amounts of designs in the past five years. We have just launched the new design right now. It's not completely Full- done. I will, I will mention that right off the bat. I'm having issues with, for whatever reason... Um, mm-hmm. Our beta version looks mm-hmm. 100% the way it's supposed to. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> this one, I can't seem to figure out this damn problem, and it's bothering me. It, I, it'll be fixed soon, I'm hoping. Mm-hmm. Um, it's functional. It, it just it, There's a couple of like aesthetic things that bother me. Uh, mm-hmm. Although, if you're using Google Chrome, I guess it works fine. Works fine for if me. If you don't use Google Chrome, you're kind of screwed. <laughs> yeah, you're... Yeah. Pretty much. Um, um, so, ahead. but uh, but yeah, I, I do have some more uh, elements that will be showcased in the site once uh, I get some of the other bugs worked out. Um, again, this is all at my leisure that I have very little of between working with the house and mm-hmm. life and work. So, um, but they'll be done very very soon, um, within the next week or two, anyway. Um, we, we do have plans to, uh, for instance, when there's a review of a movie or, or, or a comic or whatever, there's going to be a new voting element, Mm -hmm. um, in, in the actual posts where you'll see a different kind of ranking grid that will show up. Um, right. More or less, it, it'll it'll have um, kind of like when you're reading a video game magazine, mm-hmm. where they have the little the little box and then they show kind of the little text rankings and then have the stars or whatever and and whatnot. Um, that'll be pretty much the same way that it happens here, um, but there'll also be uh, the ability to have um, where you, the listener, gets to vote on the post as well. Um, to kind of give it and it goes by an average but you'll get to see your particular vote i believe um Mm -hmm. on whatever that is so it's 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 another way to get your voice heard so that you know you it it can kind of show whether people are actually agreeing with 
what we reviewed or, um, you know, as far as what our ranking is and then what, you know, the, the overall average fan ranking is. So it, it, it should be a nice, fun feature. Um, yeah, that, that was our goal with year five this year is to make the site fully interactive. Now, that being said, <laughs> I also have plans so that um, people can log in and register in the site. Um, so they can take advantage of some of these elements. Um, but you won't have to supply any information. It will be all social media driven. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of like how the, the commenting system functions. It will be the yep. same way with, you know, you just click on this. It will register. It will create an account with your social media um, information. And then you can pretty much log in after that with the social media. So Absolutely. It will be neat. Um I'm also working on a community system to where you can direct message other members of the site. Hmm. Interesting. And add them as friends on there and kind of uh, like a mini social network, not really full blown because I'm not going to try and duplicate Facebook or anything like that. It's just, it's just um, an inner member contact system kind of thing. You're basically taking the average forum site and building it into our website. You're you're basically taking something like V not is it V Bulletin that everybody uses like TFY or not TFY TFW two thousand five. Yeah, they use Whatever something the, similar to that. It's it's a V Bulletin know, kind of idea, but it's it's right, better yeah. implemented here. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so you're basically eliminating the usage of having a separate forum site for our network because it's going to be all built into the main website. Correct. Um, that's awesome. Um, uh, the, the some of the subsections, the show guide is getting a facelift. I just haven't been able to get all of the content in there, having just got internet back two days ago. Uh, yeah, the yeah the the interviews section has already had a facelift. Um, if you go to the let's just say for example, you go to the voice actors, because we've had the voice actors section is what we've had for the past five years. You'll see voice actors the first five years and all the original interviews we've done. And then you'll see at the very top all the new ones we've done. And we use, like, sm not necessarily smaller. They're a little bit larger than the old images. But they're, you know, basically like giant button images of each of the new interviews. Uh, the new color scheme for that is um, Megatron Red. Red Dragon Megatron. Yes. Um, Yes, which you need to uh, link the Joe Sanflippo one for that because it's not – I can't click on it. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, yeah, the site is getting uh, – the show guide is getting an all-new facelift. It's going to be awesome. Um, um, also, the, the staff, the site staff, um, yep. will be getting a facelift. Um, it's – we're awaiting some – specific images before I rebuild it. Um, but it's... Oh my god, I just clicked on GCRN Retro. Holy crap, year two. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I oh wish we were doing god. more of those. Those were actually fun. But What? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we need to do more of those. Um, Sprinkle yeah, comes in but, throughout the... Oh, oh my god, this is so... Look at this show guide on the main page. Oh my god. <laughs> Wow, that's so old. Okay, back button. Um, <laughs> yes, the the host. <laughs> I forgot how old that shit is. <laughs> uh, the host bios. Uh, Steve and I specifically. I'm not sure if any of our other staff members have chosen to partake in this. Um, I, Michael Dodd from This Week in Geek, a few years ago, I think when they hit their fourth or fifth anniversary, because they've been online for seven years now this year. Um, I think it was when they hit their fifth anniversary, they wanted one of their guys, Mike Laidman, to do animated cartoon-type bios for all the staff over at thisweekingeek.net. And it never happened. It never really came to fruition. Mike Dodd went and made his own animated thing for, for his Facebook page that has all his contact information and it has several pictures, you know, cartoon drawings of Mike, 
in full color. You know, he's got one that he's a Jedi. He's got one that he's a zombie. He's got one that he's a uh, RoboCop type thing. And I'm like, oh, I like that. I think that's really cool. So I thought that we could do all animated bios. And my buddy TV's Mr. Neil, who I know does amazing, amazing work. Uh, he has his own webcomic called Decian. Go to, I think it's Decian.com. He's going to kill me if it's not right. Um, he's going to be doing at least Steve and I's animated uh, bio images and they look awesome just in sketch. <laughs> you guys are going to freak out when you see them. But the bio section is going to get an all new facelift. Um, what else are we giving a facelift to? Um, I think that's pretty much it as far as that's concerned. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I, there's just a lot of great content coming this year. Um, oh yeah, we've been. I mean, this year was the debut of the GCRN awards. Yep, um, which was a totally new venture. We'd been kind of wanting to toy with the idea for a while, so it was kind of a nice um, test pilot to kind of play with. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of know what we're going to do next time now. <laughs> oh yes, most um, definitely. Not only for ease of use, but. Um, but so that we can, um, so that we can kind of go through and uh, um, widen the scope, so to speak. Absolutely. Uh, and, and I have a little bit better idea of how I'm going to go about it um, as well. Um, not to mention, <laughs> we've got. Uh, I, I renovated recently the GCRN uh, Join the Network. Mm -hmm. um, which is a instead of having to fill out this kind of goofy formatted word document we kind of have a, a rough guideline of the the application process and then you click for a, a member application and uh, you can actually fill it out as a form mm -hmm. it will submit it to the site to me um, and then I'll be able to um, relay all the information. It's basically got the same amount of stuff in there and a little bit of more descriptions. Um, mm -hmm. It's got, uh, because a lot of time when I would get them, uh, we ended up needing more information. Uh, so right. there'd be a lot of waiting and waiting and waiting back and forth. And because um, I tend to somehow lose emails sometimes, <laughs> more so because my inbox fills up a lot. Um, that and... I tend to forget to follow up if I don't get the things right away. Mm. Uh, not because I don't intend to, but because I end up overlapping with 10, 20 other things that I've got to get done. Um, so I've got it so that it's set up with uh, contact email, podcast, RSS, URL, because sometimes I never get those and I have to <laughs> dig them out myself. Um, the podcast art image, the logo of whatever the association is or podcast, because um, some of them have different stuff than the art for the podcast. Um, I have a spot for uh, commercials, uh, MP3s to be uploaded uh, if they so choose, um, which why wouldn't you? Because <laughs> we'd all like to spread the wealth of um our interactions so that's so you submit it and then everything goes to me and then i'll um, be able to show it to the board of gcr and trustees <laughs> but i think yes. that's pretty much you know a, a lot of the uh um, stuff besides a lot of the aesthetics that are on the site now and the new the new footer and uh, mm -hmm. organizations are a lot cleaner mm -hmm. and a lot more organized uh there's a lot more um and of course, the menu when you scroll, it follows you. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the creepy guy next door. <laughs> oh. We're sorry, Chuck. We didn't mean to pick on you. <laughs> what? A, that's a low blow, Mike. <laughs> He'll probably say that too. I'm but Gary and Justin and all those guys know it's true. <laughs> hey. <laughs> um. So I think we're gonna take a quick break. 
we're going to come back and go through the feedback that we received. Uh, four of these are contest entries for our five-year anniversary contest. One of them is from one of our fellow hosts, Movie Revolt Dan. We'll be back after this. This is for the Geek Test Radio contest. Uh, Geek Test changed my uh, only to geek in me was the podcast on the different cartoons and shows that I grew up on. The unique opinions given are sometimes so hilarious that while I'm listening to them at work, they just cause me to laugh out loud. Ah, laugh out loud. Hope this continues for at least another 50 years. Later, this is Draconis. Hey guys, this is Rob Paulson, and you're listening to the Geek Cast Radio Network. This is Jason David Frank, and you're listening to the Geek Cast Radio Network. Hey Mike, Jeremy Fine over here at Hunter Galcast Podcast. Wow, five years of Geek Cast Radio Network. Good job, guys, good job. <clears throat> um, well, for me. I first came across GeekCast Radio Network, I would say between 2010, 11, I was a late bloomer with the podcasting. I had heard about it, I think, anywhere between 05 and 06, but I really didn't quite understand what to make of it at the time. I didn't think, um, you know, I didn't have the editing equipment, I didn't quite know... If I was going to be able to put together a podcast, I was doing some public access television work with some friends, talking about the salad days of the World Wrestling Federation, and I was boring myself. And one day I said, you know, I'd rather do like a variety on some uh, pop culture topics, and, uh, you know, everybody just kind of like went their separate ways. So you fast forward to 2010 and 11, and. Because you know, I was doing the po- uh, the public access work and I think, you know, 2001 to 2007, so you fast forward a few years later and I decided just to do some researching on uh, on how to put together a podcast and I guess I decided to listen to a few before I put together my own and GeekCast is actually the first one that I came across, and I believe it was a Tooncast episode. I think it was um, you reviewing Darkwing Duck or um, Gummy Bears. I can't, it was one of the Disney Afternoon uh, reviews that, that I definitely do know. And then um, I started listening to Legends of the Dark Knight, and I've been hooked ever since. As for me, I am... Eternally grateful that I'm now partnered with Geek Cast Radio Network. I mean, you know, I I still can't believe I have a podcast of my own a few years after the public access work didn't go through. And, you know, I have my followers. I have a review here and there. I get to, you know, guest co-host on some Geek Cast Radio Network episodes. And it's great. You know, I definitely have no complaints. I, I, I said this when I reviewed Legends of the Dark Knight, that, you know, free entertainment couldn't be any sweeter. It, it's, I guess this is, you know, back in the 60s to 80s when there was pirate radio, not, you know, not public radio. But now it seems like everybody can put together, you know, either their own YouTube channel or their own podcast. And I guess it depends on what the topic is about. I like my grab bag podcast because this way I don't have to stick on one topic and I like that I get to keep the audience guessing of what the next topic will be you know I like the fact that when I looked at my podcast hosting site that I'm in the top 100 in society and culture so that makes me feel good and I guess I feel that as long as I have you know I'm in the top 100 or you know, 200 or whatever, as long as I know that people are downloading, I I would say between the time I finally recorded a few casts and uploaded them back in October until now, I've done the math, I have close to about 500 downloads, I believe, 
By the end of this month, I should have close to 100, which, you know, makes me feel good. And I feel that as long as I have people downloading my podcasts and, you know, I get to, you know, guest co-host on GeekCast every now and then, I'll definitely continue to do it. But as for GeekCast Radio Network, the main shows... Well, you know me, I'm a bat fanatic. I love Legends of the Dark Knight. I love the main geek cast radio. I love Wars. I think my favorite episode of Wars were definitely um, the Flintstones versus the Jetsons and um, Thundercats versus Silverhawks and Star Wars versus Star Trek. And I definitely love that um, 80s villain tournament. I thought I thought that definitely rocked, especially the you know Psy Kill going uh, up against Megatron. You know, everybody seems to play off each other well when we're recording podcasts. I love M-Wire. I love the top 100 lists. You know, now that I'm part of GeekCast, I hope, you know, the next time a 100 list comes up that I can have some sort of part in it. Um, I hope when a Wars tournament opens up again that I get to have some sort of part in it. Um, and, of course, Pullback. We can't forget about Pullback, which is one of the newer GeekCast Radio, and, and, and you've got me back at the comic books again, which I love. But, all in all, here's to five years, and, you know, here's hoping to another five. So, with that said, oh, and, well, of course, with that not being said, how can I forget all the syndicated shows? You know, Turtle Flakes, and Punisher Body Count, and Whoiverse, and um, Geek Movie Scholar News. I can't wait to see what the new GeekCast Radio website looks like in, in a couple of days. So now, with that said, thank you for taking the time to... No, 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 that's it. Oh, I know. Um, you're welcome to listen to Kaiju Bless You. You're welcome but I won't... No, 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 that's not it. What do I want to say? How do I want it? Oh, yes. Geekcast Radio, five years. Well, continue to unleash the geek in all of us. Take care. Hi, this is John Delancey, and you are listening to the Geekcast Radio Network. Hey, this is Josh Keaton, and you are listening to the Geekcast Radio Network. Hi, this is Kevin Conroy, and you're listening to the GeekCast Radio Network. Hey, this is Greg Berger, and you are listening to the GeekCast Radio Network. Imari Williams here, and you're listening to GeekCast Radio Network. All right, we are back, and what you heard there was uh, congratulations on five years with our buddy Jeremy Fine, who is part of the network now with his Hanukkah Outcast podcast. And you also heard our first contest entry, with uh, Draconis, I believe that's how he says his yep. name. So, um, thank you to Draconis for entering via voicemail. Uh, thank you to Jeremy for leaving us a five year anniversary message. Um, the contest here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. I did a contest of evil back in the pull bag last year where I gave away the necessary evil DVD and trade paperback. And we wanted to give back uh, to you, the listeners and fans, longtime fans, longtime listeners. I'm really surprised a lot of the longtime listeners and fans have not did not submit a contest entry. Um, we've got uh, Draconis on the voicemail, uh, and we've got three written entries. The first written entry uh, is from Scanner51. He says, checking in here, I can remember... Stumbling onto your site mid-2012, typed in 80s cartoon themes into Google, and got a link for TuneCast. Boom, everything changed. I work a shitty midnight to nine shift out in the San Francisco Bay Area. The only good thing about this shift is six hours to listen to whatever I want, and listen, I did. For the next almost two years now, I went through your podcast, TuneCast, Telecast, TuneCast Beyond, uh, From the Command Center, Legends of the Dark Knight, uh, Secret Origins Podcast, most of M-Wire's 007 and the DC Movie Blocks kicked ass. Uh, the best part about your network is the fact that it got me back into old cartoons and old TV shows I used to watch. 
The sights, the sounds, the feelings. Once I had all come back. I won't lie to you guys. May have cost me some money, too. I bought some old cartoons on DVD, you know, for my daughter to watch. Uh Uh-huh, sure you did. Um, uh, Also, um, if not for From the Command Center, I never would have had the want to go meet Jason David Frank at this year's Wizard Con in Sacramento. Thanks, guys. Love the podcast. Love the network. Your loyal, loyal fans for life. Scanner 51 and his year old daughter. Um, so that is one of the the uh, contest entries. The next. Uh, did you want to say something? Oh, yes. I was going to read them. Oh, okay. Well, you can read the next one then. Okay. Sorry. Oh, no, that's fine. <laughs> um, we have Danny on there, and he says, I was a big fan of Beast Wars, Beast Machines, and Red as a kid, but around no 304. I fell out of Transformers and other favorite childhood shows. Then out of pure curiosity, I looked for a Beast Wars podcast in late 2011 and found the Beast Unleashed podcast. This led me to get the 15th anniversary sets. Then I listened to all things Transformers, Legends of the Dark Knight, Tooncast. While I listened to other podcasts, the Beast Unleashed allowed me to embrace the geek side of the Force. Keep doing good work, Danny. Absolutely. Uh, and the final one list, do you want to read this or do you want me yeah, to? Yeah, I'll go ahead and read this one. Okay, this is from Mike Carvalho. He's been a fan for a long time. Yes. Um, <laughs> he says, Hi, I just wanted to say great works, guys, and though I may be ineligible as I won a pole bag contest, I still should tell you guys how you helped me out. First off, I get very bored at work, and the podcast you do, guys do really do help the time pass. I generally enjoy the podcasts I listen to from GCRN and look forward to the newest uploads. I found shows like the Transformers Animated Podcast fun, for example, just so or just to relieve this relive the series, for example. Secondly, I get to listen to reviews and get recommendations for movies or TV shows or even comics I might otherwise pass over. So my pull list for my comics have grown and I've gained an appreciation of other stuff I wouldn't have. You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> Another benefit was the listening to the pull bag where I remembered to have fun with the comics, not just to keep being as critical as I was. Yeah, we've yeah. been learning that one too. Yeah. Yeah, new zero year. <laughs> um, keep going. <laughs> lastly, I'm pretty much surrounded by people who by and large aren't geeks and don't enjoy or aren't capable of having an intelligible conversation about such things. These are conversations I don't get to have, so it's fun to get to listen to you guys have them. So it helps me reconnect with a fun part of life and makes me feel like I'm not alone in my interests and I don't feel so isolated. FYI, you... I'm not half as sad and lonely as this might make me sound. <laughs> Mike. Where do you live, dude? The seventh circle of hell? The fact that you're surrounded by people that aren't geeks? Oh my god. I at least have people that at work come up to me and want to talk about movies. Yeah, that's that's a good thing. Which, um, which as, that's and then I have one guy that talks Batman with me. So, as far as eligibility goes, we at the GCRN do contests just like radio station do contests. You cannot win the same. You cannot win more than two contests within thirty days. So Mike won the pull bag contest of evil last year. So he is eligible for this contest. Now I will say because we only had four entries, everyone is a winner. Everyone will be getting some sort of prize pack. I have a crap ton of comics that I'll be giving away. I've got these uh, I've got several soundtracks from Lalan Records that I'll be giving away in in in, in some of the prize packs. Um, I've got I think one superhero DVD or one vigilante DVD, I guess you could say. Um, and you, I don't, I don't know what you're putting into this because I, I just don't know. You and I haven't really talked about what, what you're, what you're gonna be giving away in your prize packs. I have a decent amount of stuff. I have comics. I have some trades. I have um, some various DVDs and Blu-rays I've gotten over the years mm-hmm. from Geekcast Radio related content. Um, and uh, some other other content as well, but um, yeah, it's 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 going to be completely random. All the stuff sent. It may take both of us a little bit, maybe until July to send it. Um, only most likely, only because um, 
Well, currently, I'm broke. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. The damn house. <laughs> um, so, uh, but yeah, it's. It, I, I definitely agree with Mike. Everybody here is a winner. We're we're all. Yeah. Um, we're all, all glad to have everyone as listeners and, and fans. And uh, um. I I had made a list. Um, I ha- I was just curious. Now I'm not making a big deal out of this, uh, you know. But I, I wanted to make a list of all the prizes that I was going to be giving away. Um, and I wanted to see how much money, like, you know how they, you know how like on, you know, if you ever watch, I don't, I don't know, because I, I know you have a day job, so you've probably never seen it. You ever watch Let's Make a Deal with Wayne Brady? Yeah, I've seen it before. Okay. How Jonathan Mangum always says, this deal is worth blah, 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 blah. I actually went through all of the comics that I'm putting into these prize packs and uh, total valued them out. Um, the total overall value of the prize packs that I'll be sending out is close to $250 worth of stuff. So, you know, uh, and it's really, you know, I wouldn't just throw anybody, you know, a bunch of random, random comics. I'm going to cater it to each, each person, um, and what I think they should check out, uh, you know, so there, it, it's going to be very, very, very awesome uh, for for all four of the winners uh, to just get this mystery GCR inbox from us. Um, mystery GCR inbox. That's right. If you say like, where uh, he goes, mystery GCR inbox. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so. Uh, the other thing we had asked, now I know people don't have a lot of time, I get it, a lot of people, you know, have busy, busy lives, but we had asked our staff to either record something or write in or do something since we're going to be doing a syndication spotlight on the syndicated shows, it didn't apply to them, it only applied to core staff, um, so, uh, Dan Clark, Movie Revolt Dan, wrote in a letter. Do you want me to read this, or do you want to read uh, it? You can go ahead and read it. All right. Where's that Zoom function? Come on, Google Plus. Or not Google Plus. Um, Google Chrome, I should say. Oh. All right. Yeah. I, I, I'm an old man. I can't see anything anymore. Where's my quad focals? <laughs> Ain't that the damn truth? Uh, so, Movie Revolt Dan says, Hey guys, I wasn't able to get anything recorded for this podcast, but I did write a letter. Mike and Steve, first of all, huge congrats on hitting your five-year anniversary. That is quite a feat. Back when you first started, people were still using first-generation iPhones, which is like the Stone Age compared to today. In all seriousness, what you built with the GCR needs to be admired. The podcasts, the blogs, and of course the interviews have provided great entertainment for us all. Your dedication to produce a quality product day in and day out has made GCR a network to be reckoned with and provide ample opportunity for you and your fans to unleash the geek in them all. I personally started uh, as a fan of the network, getting sucked into the Top 100 Animated Series countdown and not being able to stop since. There have been many highlights over the years and clearly many still to come. Lastly, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to join the GCR, and, which is by this point feels like ages ago. You've allowed me to flex my creative muscles and enter the wonderful world of podcasting. Clearly, this five-year anniversary is only the beginning as the network continues to grow stronger. Here's to another 5, 10, 15, heck, even 20 years of GCRN. And I'm sure Mike already has podcasts planned out to that time. Yeah, probably so. Um, So much of the internet is full of vile people who do nothing but promote negativity. You two are proof that nice guys don't finish last. You show the power of the fandom and what truly means to be a geek. I only hope... More have the opportunity to learn from the lesson that you teach. Best regards, Moore Roll Dan. So thank you so much to Dan for sending that letter to us. Uh, absolutely amazing of him. Um, I think we are going to take another quick break, and then we're going to come back and give you a pre. I'm going to give you a preview of some of the podcasts I have 
uh, that are ending this year and some that will be beginning either this year or next year. So we'll be back after this. It's Morphin Time on the Geek Cast Radio Network. Hi, this is Kyle Higgins, and you're listening to the Geek Cast Radio Network. Hi, this is Larry Dottilio, writer for He-Man and Beast Wars, and you are listening to the Geek Cast Radio Network. Hi, this is Lauren Lester, and you're listening to the Geek Cast Radio Network. Hi, this is Margaret Scott, the first female writer in Transformers Comics, and you are listening to the Geek Cast Radio Network. Hi, this is Pat Fraley, purveyor of Duck Dog and Felon Voices. And you're listening to the Geek Cast Radio Network. This is Phil Lamar, and you are listening to the Geek Cast Radio Network. This is Bob Skier, writer of X Men and Beast Machines, and you're listening to Geek Cast Radio Network. You got the touch! Stan Bush here, and you are listening to the Geek Cast Radio Network. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and we are going to, I'm going to give you a preview of the shows that are retiring this year because they are going to be concluded. Uh, one show has a slight exception, but we may come back to that in a few years. We don't know yet. And then I'm also going to give you a preview of what's coming up for the GCRN uh, for some of the podcasts. Um, Beyond the Night, uh, our Night Rider podcast that I've been doing with uh, Dion the Music Man, has been going strong since about 2011, 2012. The reason why I say 2011 is because uh, I did the episode zero. I kind of pulled a, a, a cartoon thing where you do an episode, you know, a pilot before, you know, a year before the actual show starts. Um, Beyond the Night will be ending with episode 50 in September this year. Uh, Optimus Soul and I will be getting through uh, the 30 episodes of Mass Mayhem. That will be coming back. We will be getting through that before the end of this year. The first in the series of four podcasts for Powers of Grayskull, Tales of Eternity, will be coming to a conclusion this year as well. Um, and then you want to take the two that you've got that are retiring this year? Well, I figured this was as good a time as any. Um that I should end all things Transformers Mm -hmm. Um, on a six year plus it's what, how many years? 30 years of Transformers? Yep, 30 years of Transformers. We're doing uh, 30 years of Transformers spotlights on all the different incarnations of cartoons that are the the US based cartoons. Uh, We're going to be talking about comics, toys, everything. So yeah, I figured this was as good a time as any to um, call it quits before the show just completely bombs. Because um, it's, it's been a fun ride, don't get me wrong. I just I don't want it to go down the tank. Um, Absolutely. Bad. So I, I figured, you know, that's that's probably the best send-off I can give it is, you know, the 30-year. Um, mm-hmm. um, and then it's, you know, of course, the dynamic trio, or Three Stooges. Yeah. Um, <laughs> returning to uh, the fold. Yeah, me, you, and Michael Wilson. Yep. Um, I don't know, like, for interviews or anything like that. Uh, I don't know about that, and I don't know about special episodes for ATTF 1.0. But if you take episode 1 to episode 58 from the 1.0 and take episode 1 to episode 50 of the 2.0, you would have done in the six years... 108 episodes of all things Transformers. Oh, huh. interesting. Now that's not including interviews that we've done for ATTF, and that's not including like the special episodes that aren't numbered. Um, I will say that even though we are going to be retiring ATTF, any general Transformers interview that isn't um, show specific, like TFG One, TFG Two. Uh, will go on the ATTF feed. So we will still be putting interviews on that feed. But as far as the overall episodes, I think ending it at 50 for 2.0 is is very fitting. And like I said, I, I I sat down one afternoon, and, you know, All Things Transformers is Steve's show. I've never, ever attempted a coup to take that show from him because that was his baby. He started it. I've just tried to steer him in a direction where I think it might help the show. 
And I sat down one afternoon and I came up with a plan for the final episodes of all things Transformers. It's all a part of the plan. That's right. Uh, the other one that you've got ending for now, there, there's a, there's another little asterisk behind this one. It'll end for now, but I also made a suggestion to you of how you could continue it at a later date if you wanted to. So why don't you talk about that one? Well, this one is Legends of the Dark Knight, of course. Um, more or less... It's, I mean, it's going to end with the DC Animated Universe, mm-hmm. uh, regardless. Um, okay. But there is the possibility it could return. Yes. Um, meaning we could eventually cover um, the the Batman, Brave and the Bold, and... Um, Beware. Beware the Batman. So that's that's more so where that one could come in in the future. Yep. Um, yep. And to be honest, I wouldn't mind going back to Batman, but I think that it needs to end where it is um, in order for it. To for now. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, in order to hold the integrity that the show had, um, mm-hmm. it, it, oh, just, absolutely. it needs to go away for a little while. Absolutely. That's the same way I feel about uh, From the Command Center. Uh, you know, Scotty and I have been doing, Scotty, Spada, and I have been doing From the Command Center since 2011, so nearly three, four years now. Um, and I honestly have, lo- this isn't me trying to al- alienate my podcast fan base for that show. I think the show has run its course. We're no longer in the 20th year. The 20th year was last year. Um, I'm not that interested in Megaforce. Um, I do have it on my DVR to watch it, but I just don't. It's just, I would rather go back and watch it as a whole full episode, you know, full art kind of thing, and then do the episode on it. I will say that uh, From the Command Center will not just end at episode 43. Um, it won't. Uh, we have episode 44 through 50 planned out. Episodes 44 through 47 are going to be commentaries. I'm not going to tell you what commentaries, but they're going to be commentaries. Uh, episode 48 will be the overall Megaforce slash Super Megaforce episode. Episode 49 will be the commentary on the Super Megaforce leg- Legacy episode or Legendary, whatever the episode it was that JDF went back to film for. And then episode 50 will be a grand finale discussion. Um, so yeah, we've got Beyond the Night, All Things Transformers, Legends of the Dark Knight, Mass Mayhem, and Powers of Skulls: Tales of Eternia all ending by the time 24 by the time December 31st 11:59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time hits all of those shows will have been retired. Um as far as stuff that's coming up, stuff that we're going to be premiering, like I said, um Tooncast Beyond is going to come back this summer. TV's Mr. Neil and I are going to do an animation direction spotlight. What this is is we're going to spotlight several different animation directors. People like Walt Disney, people like Chuck Jones, Tex Avery, Bob Clampett, uh, basically celebrating the golden age of animation. Uh, And as I alluded to earlier in this podcast, in December it is going to be the first annual Tooncast Beyond 25 Days of Christmas. You are going to get a grab bag of different Christmas-themed cartoon episodes uh, over the first 25 days, from December 1st to December 25th, um, Fortune Cast Beyond. Uh, I say first annual. I've planned 2014 and 2015's Toon Cast Beyond 25 Days of Christmas. Here's the th- here, here's another big thing. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, you might have noticed by now this is, you know, we're in June and the TFG2 podcast has not come to fruition yet. 
there's a reason for that. I wanted I wanted us, I wanted me, you and Michael to come back and do it for, you know, for the 30th anniversary and and do it properly, do it right cuz everybody complains about the original TFG1 podcast. And we are still going to do it, but we have to finish out the first bit of continuity with our Transformers coverage. We did TFG1, we did Beast Wars Beast Machines with Beast Unleashed, we did animated as we got tapped. Um now we're heading into prime time because Transformers Prime Time from the Geekcast Radio Network will premiere at some point this year. I don't know when, but we are going to be doing, I believe it's 25 overall episodes dedicated to Transformers Prime. Yep. Yep. And as far as stuff for next year, you'll just have to wait and and, and see if we have any other announcements. I do know I have um, a couple of shows coming up uh, in 2015, but we'll talk about those at a later date. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to bring up? Um, I, I do have plans to eventually do um, rebooting mainframe. It just depends on when Tara and I can um, get our schedules to mesh. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's that's in the um it's been plotted out since last year. Yeah. It's just the time and everybody's schedules it's gotten difficult over the years. Mm-hmm. Um but uh, it's 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 you know, it's not going to be a very long show running show. It's going to be only 15 episodes because there's not really you, you can't really drag it on further than that. Um Right. But it's it, it it'll I, I can promise it'll be a, a fun ride when it does happen. So, um, but yeah, that's that's about the only thing really that I've got. Um, the only other thing I want to mention is that movie we can review. I M Wire, M Wire, M Wire has two factions now. It has me and Steve and whoever else I decide to pull on for in depths. Uh, and it has Kevin and his crew on weekly. I have made the decision because as of late, I would say over the last three Marvel films, we've both kind of doubled up, even though Kevin and his crew attempt not to do spoilers. Um, with Captain America, Winter Soldier, Amazing Spider-Man 2, and X-Men Days of Futures Past, we have all kind of doubled up on opinions. So, M-Wire in-depth, M-Wire retro, whatever you want to call it, the regular M-Wire episodes, they will no longer be current films at all. Current films meaning this year released films. Anything 2013 and, you know, backwards in time is fair game. Uh, the other announcement with M-Wire in-depth is that I'm moving it to monthly. So you're going to get five episodes every month, or or six, depending on if it's a five-week month. Uh, you're going to get four M-Wire weeklies, most likely, for the most part. Uh, and that's Kevin, Nate, and and his and Matt uh, doing their their thing with, you know, the box office and, and the movie news and all that kind of stuff. And then once a month, you're going to get an, an M-Wire in-depth with me and whomever else I choose to... Uh, put in on it with me. Uh, this monthly uh, M-Wire stuff will start, I believe, somewhere uh, somewhere around July, which is our uh, five-year anniversary of M-Wire. Uh, coming up, we have the final episode of the current films, which is myself, Booth Ninja 81, Michael Powers, uh, and Art Danner and Movie Revolt Dan talking spoilerific uh, X Men Days of Futures Past. Uh, Jeremy Fine and I and possibly Movie Revolt Dan are going to do the two more two more parts of the Thin Man coverage, and then you and I are going to do something for the fifth anniversary. I don't I don't know. We're going to cover some film. I, I, I don't know which will be July 11th, and then after that uh, we're going to be doing. One film a month, and right now they're probably going to change a little bit because I've got some movies on my DVR that I might want to cover at some point. So, but yeah, that's what's going on with M Wire. Um, everything else is 
kind of doing amazing. I mean, we're we're on top of the world right now, and and things can only look up from here. At least we hope so. <laughs> yeah, for the most part. So I think that about rounds it out for this episode of Geekcast Radio and the Year Five Celebration. Yep. Um, I will say that we will be uh, having a lot more planned this year, so be sure to check the site and all of our social media because uh, we're going to be kind of beating you with a stick with content. Oh, yeah. So. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. So there you go, folks. That's GeekCast Radio, episode 65. Join us next time where I have no idea who's going to be on it with me, but we're going to have a very, very short Star Trek, not Star Trek, damn it, Star Wars uh, retrospective. It'll be me. That, if you want, it's up to you. I was on the we previous talk- ones. We ragged on you the whole episode. I'll be on this one, too. Jerk. Um... <laughs> Unleash the geek in you, and we will catch you next time. In any case, see you out there. Oh, who has been able to finally get on microphone? One more time, Bug, I told you to move! All right, all right, don't get your knickers in a twist there, lizard lips. All right, citizens, stand back. I will say, you're listening to GeekCast with pretty much everyone from the entire universe. It's the Scott McNeil thing. We love you, bye-bye! Or something like that? This is David Sobolov, voice of Depth Charge in Beast Wars, and you're listening to the Beast Unleashed podcast. Hi, this is Sumali Montano, and you're listening to the GeekCast Radio Network. Hey, Tara Strong here, and you're listening to the GeekCast Radio Network. Hi, this is Dr. Andrea Letamendi. And Brian Ward from the Arkham Sessions. And you are listening to the GeekCast Radio Network. Hey, this is Dave Brenner, guitar player for Theory of a Dead Man. You're listening to GeekCast Radio Network. Hello, discerning podcast listeners. This is Tom Kenny, and you are listening to the GeekCast Radio Network. You've just listened to GeekCast Radio on the GeekCast Radio Network. There are several ways to get in contact with us or leave feedback for the show. First, visit the website geekcastradio.com where you can comment on all of our different podcasts. Second, you can rate our show and leave us feedback in iTunes. Third, follow us on Twitter at GeekCast Radio. Fourth, become a fan on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash geekcastradio. Call the voicemail line, 502-526-5821. Please remember to tell us the show you are leaving the message for and your name. So until next time, unleash the geek in you.